Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today's lesson is going to be about 2.2, adding rational numbers, which we're just going to basically focus on fractions in this video. So make sure that you have your notes ready to write down eight things. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to make sure we understand is when we add rational numbers, we're using those same rules that we learned for integers. So what we're going to write down is our song. And remember our song from chapter one, same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract. Keep the sign of the larger value, then you'll be exact. Go ahead and pause the video now and write down the song so you remember the rules for adding rational numbers. Once you're done, click play so we can go on. The first one is, um, I'm going to just show you. So this one says adding fractions with like denominators. So this is going to be pretty easy because when you add fractions, you must have common denominators. So this one is already has a common denominator for us, so we can just go ahead and add. Two-fifths, we have a negative one and two-fifths plus negative four-fifths. That is same sign, so I'm going to add and keep the same sign. So two-fifths plus four-fifths will give me six-fifths, and then I still keep my negative one. We cannot keep this fraction like this, though, because this six-fifths is what's called an improper fraction. So we got to change it to a mixed number first, which is going to be 1 and 1 fifth, because 5 can go into 6 once with 1 left over, and then just add it back to this 1, so that's going to give us negative 2, and 1 fifth is our answer for this one. So these two you're going to try. Go ahead and pause the video. Once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, so here we go. Number two, it looks like we have different signs. So remember, different signs subtract. When you're subtracting, you're going to subtract the fractions first. So we have a 7 tenth minus 7 tenths. That's going to give us 0. So all that's left is that negative 1. So negative 1 should be our answer for number 2. For number 3, we have same signs. So we're going to add and keep. 2 thirds plus 1 third is 3 thirds. And 1 plus 1 is 2. I'm not going to keep it like this because negative 2 and 3 thirds, 3 thirds is actually going to give me the whole number 1. So I'm going to actually put the 1 back together with the 2 to get a whole number negative 3 for number 3. Here's some more you can try. Go ahead again, pause the video, try it, click play once you're done. Number 4, it says we have different signs. we got to do different signs subtract. When we are subtracting, notice... I'm taking the larger number and subtracting the smaller one. I cannot do 1 fourth minus 3 fourths, so I'm going to have to borrow here. This is how we borrow with fractions. The 1 becomes a 0, and then I can add a 4 fourths over here to make it easier to subtract. 1 fourth plus 4 fourths is 5 fourths, so I'm essentially subtracting 5 fourths and 3 fourths. That's going to give me 2 fourths, which simplifies to 1 half. Now I just have to make sure I need to keep the sign of the larger value, so my answer should be negative one-half for number four. Number five should have been pretty easy because if you notice, these are additive inverses. Additive inverses, again, just means that they're opposite numbers, and anytime you're adding opposite numbers, your answer is always zero. Okay? When we have fractions with unlike denominators, this is where you go, you're going to have to change um, to have common denominators. So first I have negative 8 thirds plus 5 6. I've got to think about what do 3 and 6 have in common. They both can be changed into 6. I'm going to keep um, 5 6 the same because it already has a denominator of 6. But now I have to worry about how to change 8 thirds. I know 3 times 2 gives me 6. That means 8 times 2 will give me my 16. And now I can go ahead and solve it. I have different signs here, so I'm not actually going to add those two fractions. Notice I have negative 16 6 plus 5 6, so different signs I'm going to subtract. 16 take away 5, that's going to give me 11 6, and I'm going to keep the negative because the larger value, 16 6, was bigger. And then I'm going to make sure that my answer is in my final um, form, so I'm going to change that into a mixed number. So a negative 11 6 will be equal to negative 1 and 5 6. These next two you're going to try on your own. So again, let's go ahead and pause the video. Try them on your own. When you're done, click play. 
So number six actually does have a like denominator, but notice that you have a mixed number and an improper fraction. So you could do one of two things here, either make them both mixed numbers or make them both improper fractions. I think I'm going to make mine improper fractions um, just because it looks like it might be easier to add or subtract here. So 3 times 6 is 18, 18 plus 1 is 19, so you get 19 thirds, negative 19 thirds plus 20 thirds, and then it becomes really, really simple to figure out. Negative 19 plus 20, that's different signs subtract, so I'm going to subtract those, I get 1, keep my denominator the same, and I notice that my larger value is positive, so my final answer will also be positive. Number seven might have been a little bit tricky because you don't have a denominator for the two, but you can easily make it a, have a denominator by putting a two over one. That's always true with any whole number. I think what I'm going to do here is change my denominators so that they both have a two. So one times two is two, so two times two would give me four. Noticing again, I have different signs subtract. So I'm going to subtract those. Four take away seven is three. Keep my denominator the same. And then keep the sign of the larger value. That's going to be negative seven. So I'm going to keep my negative. Negative three over two is going to change to a mixed number. Negative one and one half. The last one I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, evaluating the expressions. This is just basically when you're plugging in values and then solving. We're going to look at just number eight together. Um, so you can write as we go or write, pause it and write when we're done. We have the absolute value of a plus b. So a I know is one half and b is negative five halves. So a plus b, that'd be one half plus negative five halves. I have different signs subtract. So I'm going to subtract 5 and 1, and I'm going to get 4 over 2, still within absolute value, and it's still going to be negative because my larger value was negative. I know that 4 over 2 can be changed to 2, so right now I've got my answer is negative 2, but then I just need to find the absolute value of negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is just 2, so that would be my answer for number 8. If you need to, go ahead and pause the video just so you can write down how we did that one. That's going to be concluding our notes for today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you later.